You're not... not here to try and steal my secrets, are you? Good. I was afraid I was going to have to abandon my lab here. That would mean starting all over again. It's not easy trying to make Ultra Jet, you know. I suppose you could say that. Ultra Jet is almost double the potency of Jet. Perfect for ghouls. Jet barely affects us, you see. Only trouble is, it's almost impossible to gather the ingredients together. Say, you might be able to help me with that. It takes three things to make Ultra Jet. Two of the ingredients I got plenty of. The other one is a little harder to find. Sugar bombs. I distill it down to its base contents and add that to the formula, then presto, Ultra Jet. For every box of sugar bombs you bring me, I'll pay you 15 caps. So, you in? Good. Now get going. I have a ton of preparation to do. So, what did you bring me? Sure. I stay away from them and they don't bother me. It's a good relationship. They live somewhere east of here. If you're feeling foolish, I think there's an underground way through their place, deeper into the metro station here. Excellent. Keep it coming. Slow down there. This area is off limits to everyone but the family. Where the hell do you think you're going? All right, all right. I guess you look harmless enough. If I were you, I'd speak to Vance before you poke around too much. You can usually find him on the mezzanine overlooking the common area. This lovely hole in the ground is Moresti, the headquarters of the family. We are a badass gang and we don't take shit from nobody. We also don't like nosy assholes who creep around asking too many stupid questions. Just remember, I got my eyes on you. We all do. What's the big idea? I thought I knew everyone in the family, but I don't recognize you. You must be one of Vance's new initiates. My name's Justin. I'm pretty new here myself. Ian, what do you want from him? I'd never thought of it that way. I suppose he should get a chance to talk to someone like you. Here's the password to his isolation area. Just please don't mention my name to Vance about this. No. Just that Vance said he isn't to be disturbed while he's in meditation. Yes, I know. He told me. Surprised? Well, Ian was there when it happened and did nothing to stop it. If you ask yourself why, the answer is obvious. He belongs with us here. He's one of us. Don't deny him his rightful home. 
Well, Vance told me that this place was called Moresti. It was named after some town way across the ocean in a place called Romania. It's a great way to get back at those assholes out there who think we're losers. If it wasn't for Vance, I'd still be getting the crap beat out of me by those guards in Rivet City. I understand. Goodbye. Well, well, I'm surprised you don't know me. I'm Brianna. I take care of the men around here. Well, unmarried ones, anyway. Vance has him in meditation right now. No one's supposed to be in there. Poor kid. He looks like he could use another friend. Well, that is sweet, but Vance would kick my rather gorgeous ass right out of here if I told you how to find Ian. Sorry. Nope. Like I told you, Vance has him in meditation right now. No one's supposed to be in there. It's the last place I ever expected to end up. I mean, look at this place. It's so dark and dingy. What this place needs is a lady's touch. But don't tell Vance I said that. How about just the coolest gang this side of the U.S.? As long as we listen to Vance's rules and listen to his stuff, he lets us do pretty much whatever we want. Bye, sweetie. Welcome to our home. My people call me Vance. I lead this group of weary travelers and outcasts who need a home. And to what do I owe the pleasure of your visit? What you see before you is the last bastion of hope for the downtrodden and misunderstood. It is a sanctuary for the oppressed and a beacon of faith for the tyrannized. We are the remnants of society, cast aside like the clean-picked bones of a hunter's feast. I led my flock beneath the sun-baked sands of the wasteland to keep them safe and teach them my ways. Men of science would call us cannibals, eaters of human flesh. Society labels us as monsters, demons, and the unclean. You amaze me. Never have I met a human with the gift of cognition that you possess. Tell me then, what are we? Do you think I believe I can turn into a bat and fly away? Of course not. Do I cast my image in a mirror? Absolutely. Now. Ask me if I believe these individuals from every corner of the wasteland need me to give them a sense of purpose and identity. I have shown these people the ways of the vampire. I've provided them shelter, organization, and a sense of belonging. Now you disappoint me. You need to open your mind and think for a moment before you pass judgment. I have reined in their cravings and taught them to eat not of the flesh, but to drink of the blood. Most importantly, they have a family. A place where their quirks are tolerated and understood. Ah, yes. My newest charge. What would you want with him? Then a part of his human family still remains? Even more of a reason he needs to remain in isolation. Ian is at a critical moment in his life right now. After all that occurred in Erafu, he is scared and confused. It would be ill-advised for me to allow you to speak to him while he decides what he wants to do. Ian's hunger for flesh overwhelmed him. It drove him to kill his parents. Because of my intervention that night, he stopped just short of being lost forever to his cravings for flesh. I am telling you, he will no longer be labeled as such. He has become one of us, a member of the family. 
The hunger that drives us must be kept in check. It is one of the most difficult things to teach. Yen lost control because no one was around to guide him. His own family was alien to him. Your words impress me, human. Perhaps I misjudged you when we first met. If you wish to speak to Ian, you are free to do so. Here is the code to the area in which he is meditating. I don't think I've met you yet. The name's Alan. What did you want? I don't have any authority here. I'm pretty new myself. Justin's been trying to talk to Ian, make him feel better. Maybe you should speak to him. Right now I call this place home. The only home that's ever let me stay with my... problems. Well, anyone that Vance takes in because of their special problems can be part of the family. Guess I'll see you around. had a customer in a while. Last one I had was a bit chewy. Know what I mean? Do I look like a fucking babysitter? I don't know where he is. Even if I did, I wouldn't tell you anyway. That's me. You don't like it? Tough. Ian, Ian, Ian! Is that all you've got to say? Sheesh. If your caps are good, you can buy whatever you like. Beats standing there drooling all over the merchandise. This place is my place of business. You want to buy something, then buy. If you want to flap your lips, take a hike. We're the last people you want to mess with. That's for damn sure. Say it ain't so. Yes, Vance. What is it? How is our newest member? Is he finding his meditation? I don't think we've been properly introduced. I'm Holly, Vance's wife. I'm afraid Vance has him in isolation, and there's no way I'm going to override Vance's orders. He's a good kid. I think Vance will set him along the correct path soon. Like he did for all of us. You just don't get it, do you? We are his real family, okay? Like I said, he's in isolation. It's his time to meditate and reflect. This is Moresti, the home of the family. It's the only safe place for these poor people. My husband started this group not long ago. He was trying to save them from a life of hardship and ridicule. They come from all over the wasteland now to find us and become part of the family. It was good talking to you. In time. Huh? What do you want? I guess I shouldn't be surprised. I'm sure Evan King is pretty pissed right about now. I bet he has the entire town out looking for me. He's worse than my parents. You think I don't know that? You think I don't know what I did? I killed them! My own parents! It was the fucking hunger. That thing that's haunted me my entire life. You must think I'm some sort of monster. There's something inside me, something completely messed up. I'm a mutant, a fucking freak. The only person I was ever able to talk to was my sister Lucy, and she's gone. No one gives a shit about me except Vance and the family. Can't you understand that? She... 
She really misses being home, and she's asked about me and here a lot. I think I had it all wrong. I shouldn't have come here. I bet Lucy is feeling just as bad as me. Please, tell Vance I've made my decision. I'm going home to Arfu. I hope to see you there as well. I'm just gonna gather my stuff together and say my goodbyes, then I'll head on back. It I trust your talk with young Ian went well. I am quite interested in learning the results of your discussion. Did he come to a decision? As long as you maintain this level of civility, please proceed. I suppose we could stop our raids on Arafu in light of this situation, but that just forces us to prey on others. Unless, many years ago, I survived by drinking from preserved blood packs I recovered from hospital ruins. The problem was that these blood packs are scarce. Agreed. Please, take this proposal to Arafu. Speak with them, and then return to me with their decision. I thank you for showing me that your kind can be trusted after all. It is a lesson I will not forget. Now, what of young Ian? Tell me his decision. It saddens me to lose one of my flock, but I believe everyone has to follow their own path. All I was attempting to do was guide him. Now it seems that responsibility has fallen upon you. I hope you will be more successful. Please, I want you to take this. Consider it as an apology to you for all the hardships you had to endure finding this place. Goodbye, human. Our time together has been rather educational. I was wondering if... There he is, the hero of the day. I know, I talked to Ian, and he told me everything you did. I don't know how you did it, but goddamn am I glad you walked up that ramp and lent us a hand. Thanks again, kid. Consider yourself welcome back here any time you're in this part of the wastes. Interesting. It seems they wish to enter into some kind of agreement. I guess it's better than pointing my gun down that ramp all day and hiding inside at night. Let Vance know he's got a deal. We'll do it. I'll speak to the others. I'm sure they'll agree with me. I've been saving up stuff for emergencies, in case things with Arafu got tremendously bad. You're welcome to some of it if you like. Come on back soon. I may have some stuff for you. Huh? Oh, you're back. Hey, hey there. Why, yes. Let me give you one of my old-fashioned chocolate chip cookies. Enjoy. Bye-bye. Don't mind, Braley. She's in La La Land again. Well, all I can do is offer my repair services to you. I'm pretty good with fixing stuff. That's usually because Braley breaks everything, thinking she's making a cake or something. Yep, take it easy. Welcome back to Arafu, kid. Hey, you're back. I'm glad I was wrong about you. Welcome back. There are a few interesting places around here I've heard about. I don't know if they'll help you or not, but you're welcome to them. Don't be a stranger. It's nice to have company. I knew you couldn't stay away. Thanks for setting me straight on everything.
It actually kind of makes me feel better to talk about it. Go ahead. I wish I could answer that. I really do. I don't even remember it happening. When the hunger takes over, it's like being pushed aside, like something else is controlling me. I can see what's happening, but can't close my eyes. I don't even remember exactly what happened until Vance knocked on the door. That's the weird thing. He has some sort of crazy sixth sense about or something. Maybe all of our kind do. As soon as I was with the family, I really felt at home for the first time in my life. It's like all these people are my real brothers and sisters. I don't remember how long I sat there on the floor staring at my parents' bodies. It seemed like days I wanted to feed, to eat their flesh. But it was like a little bit of me was holding on. Then, out of nowhere, there was shouting outside and a knock at the door. I opened it, and it was Vance. He seemed to know exactly how I was feeling inside. He took me under his arm and we left. I never looked back. Vance told me later that he was basically covering for me and allowing the family to... to feed at the same time. Since my parents were already dead, they drank their blood and left the mark on the wall. He didn't want Evan to suspect that I had done it. The irony is they were stalking our town to feed anyway. It's almost like Vance knew this would happen. Yeah, okay. I suppose not. I was about ten years old, and I was playing with Lucy down under the overpass. We loved throwing rocks in the water. We saw some wastelander trying to break open the Brahmin pens and steal one of them, so I ran over and told him to stop. He just laughed and pushed me away. When I fell, suddenly my head started to hurt and my eyes got all blurry. It was almost like I blacked out. Next thing I know, Lucy was pulling me off the guy. I had ripped his throat open with my teeth. She said I like changed into another person, that I even glared at her and raised my arms like I was gonna kill her. The wastelander took a swing at me with some kind of club. I turned around and jumped on him. I tore his throat open with my teeth. If he wouldn't have done that, Lucy may have been killed too. I just don't know. Lucy said Mom and Dad would never have understood. She told me to keep what I did a secret, and that she'd try and help me. Thanks to Lucy, she was able to stop that from ever happening again, for years. Every time I'd feel the hunger, she'd hold on to me and not let go. After a while, the hunger almost seemed to go away, until, well... I don't know, I really don't. I mean, I'm not totally dumb. I know they were in stories and all that. But who knows, maybe Vance is right and vampires were just people like us who learned to control their hunger and drink only blood. I mean, vampires are regarded as feared monsters instead of hunted animals like cannibals. Kinda makes sense. Yeah, okay. It's weird living in my parents' old house with them gone, but I'll make the best of it. Everyone around here is being nice to me despite what happened, so I guess it all turned out well. Thanks. Sounds good. Come back and visit me sometime. Always a pleasure to receive you in Maresti. What brings you down here today? To be a vampire is a life commitment. It is not achieved by my words. It is something you earn by your own will and sincere meditation. Sadly, I cannot fully make you one of us, but I can teach you how the lifeblood of others brings us regenerative powers. Since your body lacks the way to extract blood as we do, you must find alternative sources for your nourishment. Drink deep of the blood, allow not a drop to spill. Feel the warmth as it spreads inside you. You are becoming one with the life force of another. They lend a part of themselves to you. For a brief moment, you are two entities becoming one. Allow the feelings to course through your body as you partake of the blood. Feel it empower you and make you stronger. Once you have done this deed, only then will you know what it is like to be a vampire.
Excellent. I knew you would serve as an ambassador for us in good faith. Your efforts surpass those of the average human. In fact, I feel almost like you are a member of our flock. If you ever wish to learn our ways, you have but to ask. Very well, actually. Our truce with Arafu is coming to fruition. I've begun teaching my people to live off of the donated blood packs. The transition has been difficult, but we will manage. You've certainly done us a great service, and I can't thank you enough. I'm certain our paths will cross again. Well, how do you feel? Oh, I know it does, dear, but it's for a good cause. Uh, try not to squirm so much while I take notes. Now, how would you describe the pain you're feeling? Any advice for how to keep it from being overwhelming? And remember, this is for posterity. That's a very enlightened attitude you've got. Shame it doesn't stop bullets, huh? Luckily, I'm here to patch you up. Now hold still and quit fidgeting. Ugh! How can you be walking around like this? Okay, I even stitched a little smiley face in you to keep up your spirits. It's kind of hard to see from your side, though. Here, take this environment suit of mine. It will help with medical tasks, and it should help prevent the effects of exposure, too. Absolutely. I'm glad to finish it up, but I bet you're even happier, right? Just one last chapter now, and it's much safer, I promise. Oh, and here's your payment. Two big boxes full of ammo. Think of it as insurance, in case the next chapter isn't as safe as I predict. Don't take too long. The sooner the book's done, the more people we can save with it. Come back soon. Hello. Hello there. Nice to see you. Oh, thank you for remembering. With everything that's going on, I almost forgot about it. You have no idea how much this means to me. Thanks so much. Oh, okay, well, anytime you find yourself back in Megaton, be sure and look me up. <laughs>